Hi everyone and uh, welcome back. So in this particular video we are going to talk about the need of a workflow engine in a typical event driven architecture. Okay. So what we are going to do is uh, we are going to take a look, look on the order fulfillment process like um, any e-commerce solution you see right that are they are doing nothing but order processing they are taking the orders shipping it notifying the users and all these processes are involved right so and all these solutions are built around microservices some are microservices with the event driven architecture uh, or maybe uh, some different set of architecture right so we have like uh, let's call it these are four different services we have for the order fulfillment one is a payment one is a checkout one is the order processing any kind of services let's say it's a shipment okay another service is uh, inventory and here we have a checkout and the payment let's say i have these set of services and i'm writing an order fulfillment application and maybe this is already existing applications and and I wanted to use the concept of event driven architecture. Okay. I mean, in the microservice world, you will see these terms, event commands and all these things, right? And I am just uh, enhancing my architecture by using the event driven architecture. Okay. So how we are going to choreograph all these communication between different microservices, what we choose is we wanted to use the decoupled architecture totally. Okay. Once the, the order will come so let's say there is an order <coughs> and that is coming from the end user okay and that is going to initiate the whole process chain because an order is coming it will go i mean you will pay the item fetch the item and then end user will ship the item to you right so it is like a single point of invocation and then everything is being done through the events order is received order is first inventory has checked right uh, order has been shipped order has been received all these different kind of events we have right so let's see how we are going to design this i have these sort of microservices what i did is i just put a you can call it as a event queue okay let me rotate this yeah so let's say it, it can be SQS queue or uh, RabbitMQ or Kafka, anything. Okay, so whenever anything is happening, you are just emitting the event and sending this event to the event bus. Okay, this is you are using and there will be a subscriber who is listening for this particular event and they will act on to this particular event. So this is nothing but you are letting the world know that something has happened right and the world will act on to that let's say this is a sqs or let's say kafka okay you are just emitting the event and you are just letting the everyone know okay this event has arrived now process it there will be a subscriber which will listening to this so it's kind of a decoupled architecture we have invented and it is working perfectly fine we are able to process the order but what is the bigger picture we are missing here the bigger picture is we are not able to track the or we are not able to see the high level view what is actually happening in the system how many orders has been processed if something is stuck we will not be able to track it in which particular service that has become a problem right because it's event driven everything is a decoupled order service doesn't know shipment shipment service doesn't know payments and there is no centralized tracking of the state of the orders right so in this particular set of services you are doing just creating the events and this event is being posted. there is a subscriber listening to the event maybe emitting the another event so it's like this you do the checkout the you wish good shipped event will be created it will call a there will be a microservice which will be listening to that event then it will another emit the event like goods fetched payment received so it's all about the events we are talking here right so the danger is that you lose the sight of the larger scale flow in this example like order fulfillment order fulfillment it becomes incredibly hard to understand the flow change it or operate it even like answering the questions like what is happening in the system how many orders are overdue um, and we are not able to intervene to the whole system we don't even know what is happening in this overall process right 
So what we do is, let's say we introduce the workflow engine in this particular set of architecture. Workflow engine and that engine will do nothing but will listen to the events which are coming on the Kafka. Okay, so this workflow engine Workflow engine, if you are including like Kamunda or something, then it will have its own state or something. You will be writing the, the workflow process and here you will actually track each and every item. What you did is you are just listening to the events which are coming to this uh, Kafka and you are actually progressing this workflow. Okay, so order received, order placed, order processed, item fetched and item delivered. Right, so here you will do, let's say, payment received okay then you will see order completed or something like this there is a whole flow and finally you are doing order completed right so these are the events message events i will call it in the kamunda language these are the message events and you are actually doing nothing but workflow engine is playing with this workflow engine is giving you the status of how many uh, for how many orders we received the payment how many goods fetched how many has been shipped how many has been delivered right so it's like you put a watcher it is keep looking for the events which are happening right so this is about tracking now this workflow process this is nothing but a business process we are writing based on our events from the microservices order order received then you are doing a lot of things and finally order completed so it can be a whole big span of uh, events which are happening in the system right you might be also doing a lot of things uh, in the order fulfillment like uh, send order delay message if the order is not processed or in 14 days or something like that. So there are a lot of complexity involved in this and we can manage all these kind of communications and different set of events. We can track and manage both these things with the help of this workflow engine. It can be a Kamunda, ZB and uh, maybe uh, other solutions which are available uh, on this planet okay so this is just a simple example of workflow engine now we will talk about in what all different way you can actually embed this workflow engine into your microservices you can just you can just put this workflow engine independent to individual microservices you can put this workflow engine so this is the first example where we have included this i mean there is a synchronous event driven communication happening you put the workflow engine you can track everything Another thing is there is a request and reply services talking to each other. These are the rest microservices. You can put workflow engine to each and every service to track what is happening in the overall system. In that case, they will track the state of individual microservice or you can use this workflow engine as a centralized, uh, you can see centralized processing unit and you connect all your microservices to this. So there are three different type of uh, alternative architecture we can adopt that we will talk in the next video.